Hey there, clan. We wanted to let you know that Care Of is the only place that we get our daily vitamins. It's fast, it's easy, and it's super convenient because it's all just a click away. So take advantage of this special offer. For 50% off, that's five zero, your first month of personalized Care Of vitamins, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter AtlanterCast50. All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. And boy, do I, I, I just love me some TV drama. Me love me too. some TV drama. And not the drama kind that you're watching on Outlander. Oh. I mean like the business drama of it all. See, you understand this a bit more. I don't. And I'm really happy to delve into this with you because when we interviewed herself, mm-hmm. Diana Gabaldon, mm-hmm. we told her about (laughs) some drama going on with the network that's having her show and she was like what and i was like yeah girl i'm confused too this is this is this is some news so that's what we're gonna be talking about right and a lot of i mean well all right first some background uh for those of you who don't go to outlandercast.com often and you just listen to this podcast uh first go to outlandercast.com and check out all (laughs) the amazing stuff that is there yes okay number one number two I wrote an article um, talking about Chris Albrecht, who is the CEO of Stars. For or how much longer? Actually, wait, wait, time out. <laughs> was the CEO <laughs> of Stars, <laughs> and what that will do, and how that will affect okay. Outlander. Okay. And it blew up. <laughs> it, the uh, that, blog post th- blew up. That article w- went everywhere. Uh, it actually helped set a record of daily views for our website so cool uh in the first day the first day <laughs> within the first few hours it had been read over twenty six thousand times wow uh so i imagine that a lot of people read this article yes and so I you imagine, might be listening being like i already read this right but a lot of people haven't that just listened to this podcast probably have not re- read this article yeah. and a lot of them have actually written an email saying hey can you like explain this a little bit further yeah. and like so i don't have to sit there on the toilet and read for 20 minutes because <laughs> admittedly it's a long article uh so i felt like it was apropos to do a podcast episode about yes. it so that if you're driving and you just want to listen to it and you want to understand it a little bit more so we can have a conversation about it but Why the heck not? We're going to tell you this. It's not going to be the most lengthy conversation ever. Okay? No, I mean, I mean, we can get super nerdy and we can make it really Meaning long. Meaning Blake can make it super <laughs> nerdy and super long. But I have the- Ma- Mary has the, the, the tendency and the skill to just dumb it down for- um, Excuse me? No, like to, I like to, to, like to make it- more as cliff notes first. No, like to make it less nerdy and to make it like- Perfect for everybody to actually consume. That's much nicer. Oh, than that's Tom. what I meant. Well, you didn't, you know, hey, I didn't, hey, I didn't need it in a defensive into this. way. All right. Are right, you ready to get into it? <laughs> yes. All right, let's do it. So, in case you don't know who Chris Albrecht is. He was the CEO of Stars. That's the chief executive officer. He was a really, really, really big deal at Stars. He's no longer there, okay? And this is kind of a big deal, guys, that he's leaving (laughs) his job. And there's a whole lot of things that you need to know that go into play about this, okay? It's not just Stars, but it's also Lionsgate, Disney, the stock market, you know, like Wall Street, those people, ding, 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 and Apple. Okay, and you're going to be like, what? That's so many people. I know, I know. Okay, so right now- There are big corporate forces at play. We're just going to talk about Chris Albrecht for a little bit, okay? Good old Chris, Christopher, okay? (laughs) Christopher went to Hofstra. 
And after Hofstra, what did he do, Blake? Well, after Hofstra, he went to work for HBO. Okay. And at HBO, he worked up the ranks and he did his he did his thing there. Uh, and what ended up happening was he ended up becoming the head of programming for HBO eventually. Yeah. And he actually helped usher in what is widely considered what's now referred to as the first golden age of television. Uh, and that first golden age of tele- television was brought on because of him, because he approved shows like The Sopranos. Big deal. And uh, Deadwood. The- really big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wire. Um, Sex in the City. Sex in the City. You know, all Band of uh, Brothers. Uh, uh, Band of Brothers. All those shows. Okay. Uh, and and so he countless had a more. hand in bringing those shows to HBO. Right. Now, I would be remiss in light of today's world mm-hmm. and uh, in in light of the culture that we're we're all a part of now, the Me Too culture. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention to you that he was actually let go from HBO after twenty years. After twenty years, uh, in two thousand seven, he was given his walk-in papers, and he was given his walk-in papers because he was arrested uh, for having a domestic altercation with his then girlfriend at mm-hmm. the time. Uh, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I, I don't know all the details. I didn't look it up. It, it, but it, it was enough for HBO was enough for them. to say, you've been here for 20 years and what you did was not good. Right. You're done. The, he embarrassed the Goodbye. company, really. And he and it, he himself will say that he was battling alcohol and his own demons and everything and, and recovered. So that was 2007. That was in 2007. Okay. All right. So he, he did a couple of other things. Uh, in the meantime, but in 2010, he was brought in to Stas. Okay. And not only was he brought in, not only was he brought into Stas, he was made the CEO of Stas. Yeah. Stas had known his record, said it, it doesn't matter because remember, at the time in 2010, we're not in the same culture as we are today. I mean, it still is a big deal, but it's not Me Too being the hashtag what it is. And right. Stars was like, Probably saying, hopefully everyone forgot that. But remember that this is the guy that brought the Sopranos and Sex in the City and Band of Brothers. We want him. Right. That's exactly what happened. And I will tell you this. The guy is very smart. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he he has approved all of the stuff. But again, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention. Correct. Okay. So he becomes the CEO of Stars. He's not an angel. No. And he was tasked with dedicating... 90 minutes of original programming to each week for stars. So stars didn't do this before. They were just like your regular movie network that would just show stuff. Right. So remember, all of this stuff, like all of these networks creating their own like content, like Mm -hmm. HBO, this all really started in like the, the early 2000s. Okay. And I'm talking like HBO just began it. Right, yes. like they just started. Yes, uh, and within that, you know, six to seven year period, they it Chris Albrecht helped it take off. So stars wanted to take advantage of of that, and they wanted to start building their own programming. Correct. Up to this point, they were just showing movies. They yeah. had they they made deals with other movie companies and said, "We'll we'll provide a platform for you, yeah. to show your movies." And if and, you tuned in and you were at the right moment, you would watch the movie that was on. Or maybe you'd look forward to watching that movie at 8 o'clock on Friday. Right. You never know. It is what it is. Right? So he is the one who helped start stars to start creating their own content. Okay, cool. In, in, in a big way. Like yes. they, they already done so a little bit, but everything that they had done failed. It, yes. And failed miserably in comparison to what they did at HBO. But then underneath him, things like Power, Counterpart, Outlander... Yep. Black Sails, American Gods, White Princess came to be. Yeah, in countless other shows. I yeah. mean, the guy, again, he, he approved some pretty interesting and eclectic and successful programming. I mean, he made out. Well, well, let's he didn't talk make it, about, but yeah, he like, brought let's in talk about why he's a big deal for Outlander. All right, so he was, he was brought in, and he's a big deal for Outlander because Outlander in 2010... And in 2011, in those development years, this was right after Ron Moore had uh, let go of his show called, Car- called Carnival on HBO. He They had just canceled it. Ron Moore was running around and trying to find uh, a way to adapt Outlander. Ron Moore, right at this time, and even currently, had 
a partnership with Sony to develop television shows. So Ron Moore was partnering with Sony to make Outlander happen. They needed a place to bring it. So they went around to all these different uh, platforms, uh, HBO, Showtime, uh, maybe even places like uh, Stars, even. And they went around, they were saying, listen, we want to make the show. It's about these books. Here are the books for you to read. Just take them, read them. Let me know if you like the story. And we want to make it like this. We want to make it as close to the book as possible. Well, when they go around and they see all everybody at HBO and Showtime and all the other places, they were like, yeah, this is great, but we don't want to make it like that because we think the show would be better if we did it our way, if we made things a little bit more streamlined for television. And you know those books you you read them. We're not going to worry. Those about are too it. big. We're, we got we got more. Listen, we're busy in producing friggin' Game of Thrones. Okay, like uh, we're not going to read the books. So you take care of it. But we want it done this way. Ron Moore obviously was very disappointed in this. He brought it to stars, and I'm sure he had the same kind of uh, meeting with Chris Albrecht. But Albrecht was the only executive, as we were told by Meryl Davis, by the way when we interviewed her way back when. Mm -hmm. Albrecht was the only guy to read the books. And Albrecht was the only guy to say, that's awesome. Make it that way. I want you to make it this way. Don't change it. You know, change the things that you feel are necessary for television, but don't change it. Make it this way. This is awesome. I want that on my network. And that's that's why he's such a big deal because he is the one that gave us Outlander in the form that we know today. He got it. Without him. Yeah, he got it. He got it. He understood. Yes. Like this, These are the characters. These are the things that Diana wrote. He got what Diana was writing. And he read the books. He read them. Yes. And he read all of them. Yes. And he made it happen. So without him, Outlander doesn't happen today. And really, Stars doesn't really happen the way that we know it today. Correct. Okay. Because he's the one who built it the way that it is with all the eclectic um you know, programming, but he also built out this really cool thing in the Stars on Demand app. Awesome. Right? Yeah. He's the one who commissioned it and he's the one who made it. Who lets me watch Outlander on my iPad at midnight. Right. Because bed. remember, at 2010, <laughs> nobody really had these apps. No, exactly. This is a relatively recent yeah. thing. So he was the one who commissioned it for Stars. Awesome. I'm down. Okay. Yeah. So this app and Stars and all the streaming and having your own content, super duper good. But, okay, so why is he leaving if, like, everything's working out? Okay, so here's the deal. Stars was its own separate company, right, up for many years, up until 2016. Okay. When it was purchased by this company called Lionsgate. Now, Lionsgate is this big movie the, production company. They made Twilight. They made Twilight. They made The Hunger Games. They made La La Land. They even make uh, Orange is the New Black. They, okay. they partner with Netflix to make that happen. They even made Mad Men, which is considered widely considered one of the greatest television shows ever made, right? So here's how it worked for Lionsgate, right? Wait, Lionsgate made Mad Men? Yes, they, they, were, they partnered with uh, AMC to make Mad Men. Okay. So Lionsgate had this deal where they had... All of these, like this huge catalog of films, like 13,000 films. And it owned all of these films, but it didn't have a place to like put them. It didn't have a place to showcase them all the time whenever they wanted. Yeah. So they bought Stars. They bought it. And they said, Stars already has all these subscribers. They already has their own on demand app, the one that Chris Albrecht helped make. Mm hmm. And it already has this large con. This already has this like large library of content. So we're gonna buy all that content. We're gonna buy the network, and we're gonna have a place to just showcase our stuff all the time. Okay. Okay. And th- that worked because again, Star Stars provided the infrastructure, and Lionsgate provided all the money for Stars to help grow its own company. Beautiful. And make some more original content. A nice symbiotic relationship. It really was. And it even worked for Albrecht because he was still the CEO of Stars. He still ran it. He was the man. The only guy he had to answer to was the Lionsgate CEO. Now, get to, you should get to know this name very, very quickly because it's very important. The Lionsgate CEO is John Feltheimer. 
So do we need to start tweeting him and saying, keep Outlander forever? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> What's his name again? John Feltheimer. That's a name. I know. This guy was in charge of Lionsgate. And I'm going to find him right now. Indirectly now, stars. But see, Chris Albrecht was still running it himself. And now you ask me, why is he out? Why is Chris Albrecht out? All right. Lionsgate actually spent $4.4 billion. Well, he gets $14.4 million every year. Yes, he does. Good for you, buddy. John John Feldheimer. Okay, let me let me restate this. $4.4 billion. Okay, billion dollars in cash and stock, right? Yeah. And they could do that because they made a crap ton of money from Twilight and Stars and all these other things. The problem, though, is that since Twilight and, uh, not Stars, uh, The Hunger Games, since those two films, those two franchises, their movies haven't necessarily tanked because, you know, La La Land, <laughs> you know, but they just haven't made the same kind of money. And they got a little messed up because they stopped making the, the gobs of money that it was needed to support a kind of purchase like 4.4 billion dollars as a result and as a result of like their movies like robin hood the one that just came out the one with taron edgerton oh, and okay. jamie fox yeah that movie tanked tanked well and they spent, i could have told you that and they spent tons of money on it i mean look stupid right and these are the kind of movies that they've been putting out lately so here's the problem this is a publicly traded company so in response to all this money loss and they started posting all these like uh, millions of dollars worth of like losses each quarter. Their investors panicked. It's stock tanked. And the company itself was actually forced to lay off all of these employees. And Stars, in the meantime, was actually providing 75% of its revenue, like Lionsgate's revenue. Like, it, it, in other words, Stars was making 75% Stars was of the money. Stars wearing the pants. They were wearing the pants. They were the only company that Lionsgate Lionsgate owns. Lionsgate came in and they were like, oh, we're such a big deal. We're amazing. We have like 13 bajillion movies. We're so cool. And then they came in with like Robin Hood and Stars is like, Wait, I married a man child. <laughs> you, what is going on here? Right. And with all that said, you would think that that would, you would think that they would appreciate Stars and be like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Let him keep doing what he's doing. He's actually keeping Lionsgate afloat. No, because Lionsgate is a man child. Right. He thinks he's still a man. He can't cook. <laughs> can't do his own dang clothes. Okay? <laughs> can't even fold a fitted sheet. Okay, why are you describing me? <laughs> <laughs> Not great, Bob. <laughs> okay, so right. Lionsgate <laughs> equals man child. Right. And uh, Stars uh, is wearing the pants and bringing home the bacon. Yes. So he here's the problem. You're going to see a whole bunch of different stuff about Chris Albrecht and how it was a mutual decision and no. he was moving on. It's like when you mutually break up or really that just means you were dumped. Right. Exactly. We all know that. Oh, we decided mutually it was time to break up. No. <laughs> no. No. It was your. It was my decision. Sorry. Seriously. You're out. And it, this, the same can be kind of applied to this because Albrecht... Here is what it comes down to, was pushed out. And he was pushed out because, and this was, was, was written um, in uh, The Hollywood Reporter, John Feldheimer is believed to have been frustrated with Chris Albrecht's reluctance to cede precious few hours of original programming and realize the benefits of merging its production entities, or at the very least, prioritizing Lionsgate Fair, as he has Star's Productions, in a bid for increased ownership. In other words, let me put it this way. Neither of them could agree how much they would share the broadcast space between original Star's content, like Outlander, yeah. and Lionsgate content. Oh with my God, shows. blended families. <laughs> right. Okay? It's a little tricky. It's like... It's like a, a very bad version of the Brady Bunch. Yeah, it's like, where are we going for Christmas Eve? We have so many kids, and we're married, and they have kids. What, I don't know what to do, buddy. I would like to see my family on Christmas Eve. Well, I want to see my family. Well, I wear the pants. Well, I'm the man child. So, so Albrecht is saying, listen, I'm in charge of this. I'm the man child. 
Well, no, Albrecht is oh, not Albrecht. the man child. I wear the pants. I wear the pants. And Feltheimer is saying, Feltheimer is saying what? I'm the man child. You're going to do what I want. But you're going to do what I want because I'm the man child. Right. And the problem is for Albrecht that Feltheimer is there actually the guy that's really He's in charge. Boss. He's the boss. Uh. And Feltheimer had this thing where he was losing all this money. He just spent all the money to acquire stars, and he had this conundrum. How do I keep Lionsgate's money in check and make it so that we're not losing millions of dollars, laying off employees, worrying our investors, but also promote his own content and keep growing stars to make sure that that company, Stars, is a, is like a better investment, get better return on his, on his own investment, right? How does he do all that? Well, he wants to take control of it. Yeah. And it makes sense because he, he wants to make sure that that's mine. I'm going to do what it wants, what I want it to do. Yes. So he had to get rid of his biggest roadblock. And what was his biggest roadblock? Stars. Chris friggin' Albrecht. Oh. So on February 1st, Feltheimer, even though it's been stated that it, this was a mutual We all breakup, know what that means. Feltheimer issued star CEO Chris Albrecht his walking papers again. He he gave him the pink slip and said, time to take a hike. And what ends up happening is that Feltheimer is directly now in charge of stars. This should worry a lot of Outlander fans. Does this guy have any class? Has he picked up any good shows? Well, Feltheimer is actually a pretty smart guy. He actually worked for uh, Sony Pictures for a long time. What has he done? Well, he helped make those movies like The Hunger Games and Twilight and La La Land, Mad Men. He's helped do all of that stuff. Okay. Listen, the emotional complexity of Hunger Games and Twilight (laughs) does not come close to Outlander. No, it does not. And this is why, listen, I'm not going to say that John Feldheimer doesn't get good television. I'm sure that he does. And I'm sure he knows how to make good films. And that isn't necessarily problematic for the Outlander fans. Okay. What's problematic for the Outlander fans is that Chris Albrecht is leaving. And as of right now, I think he's probably already out, if not out within the next week. I hope he's on a great vacation. I hope he gets a golden parachute like Well, I don't want him to have a golden parachute because he beat up his girlfriend. Oh, valid point. Listen, I just want him to have a vacation, though, so he can go cry. Think about the man he wants to be. Think about the Outlander he wished to make. (laughs) Well, he made the Outlander that we all know and love, so I have to give him credit for that. Yes, I agree. All right. But here is what is the problem for Outlander fans and why Chris Albrecht leaving is a big deal. So the fact that Feldheimer has done this it's going to, I think, signify a shift in how stars and indirectly Lionsgate will do business in the future. Meaning their idea is to own their own IP or intellectual property. It's to own their own stuff. Meaning I want to take a show and I want to produce it and I want to be in charge of it. Right. And I want to own it. Because here's the thing. Stars does not own Outlander. Sony does, right? So for Stars, because remember, Ron Moore partnered with Sony to make Outlander. Sony owns all the rights to Outlander. So in order for Outlander to be on Stars, Stars has to pay fees to Sony in order to put it on their network. Yes. Okay. What all these companies like Netflix and Amazon and HBO have all discovered, especially because of the success of Netflix and Amazon, is that you make the most amount of money from your shows when you own it. Yes. You don't, you don't have no partners. Middlemen. There's no middlemen. Right? There's no middlemen. Cut the fat. Cut the fat. Get it out. And like, there, there are still shows that have partnerships and, right and whatever. Right now, Sony is the fat. Right. In in terms of Lionsgate. Correct. Right. In Lionsgate's eyes, they don't want to deal with Sony anymore. Huh. They don't want to deal with anybody. It's not just Sony. It's just it's just everybody. They just want to make their own stuff and make the most money. And that makes sense because that will garner the most amount of money Correct. and that will help save the company. But we, you Outlander fans are probably sitting there saying, wait, hold on. Time out. Time out. Outlander is very popular. It's bringing in all of these subscribers. 
Yeah. Uh, for most of you out there, I bet you're probably saying, if if Outlander doesn't stay on stars, there's no reason. Then I'm not going to have stars. I'm not going to keep watching it, and that makes sense. But there's only so few million of us, and and really, it's probably only about a million and a half people that are watching that are watching Outlander on a consistent basis, if that. Maybe maybe 1.2 million people, and that's not Outlander's not even the most popular show on Stars. Power is, mm-hmm. right? So, but you're saying I I'm the one who who is this, who is the subscriber. Uh, there are all these subscribers to Stars because of Outlander. How is Stars going to make money without the subscribers? Well, the thing is, Lionsgate, who owns Stars, as we've already talked about. They're not worried about acquiring more subscribers. They're not even really worried about losing subscribers at the rate that you think they probably would lose them. And the reason why they don't want to worry about it is because they already make a ton of money, a ton of revenue on their own. What they want to do is they want to streamline that that evil word yeah. streamline yeah. and cut their costs. So they're hoping to cut their costs and get rid of television shows that they're partnering with so they make more money when they produce their own shows. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. And we're going to take a quick break to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. Winter is no longer coming. Spring is, my friend. So it's time to spring into a healthy routine that's going to empower you to feel your best. Well, Caro's online quiz lets you know exactly what you need for your diet, health goals, lifestyle choices, and it only takes five minutes to find out your personal scientifically based vitamin and supplement recommendations. Getting your vitamins should be easy and convenient, right guys? Life is crazy and busy. Let's get healthy in an easier way because <laughs> you know it can be hard to know which vitamins or supplements you should be taking, but Caro makes it really easy to find out. And they also have these packs customized to your recommendations and sent to you. So you can experience the care of difference. Um, But here's what's even better. A portion of every sale goes towards the Good Plus Foundation, which provides expectant mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. So you guys know I'm all about spreading the love to fellow mamas out there. So you know you're taking care of you. You know that you got the right stuff. You're being healthy for the spring. And some little mama to be is going to be blessed with some <laughs> some good prenatal vitamins that they desperately need. And I know when I took the quiz, it took five minutes. I loved it. I loved it because it was easy. I did it on my phone. Boom, 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 done. They asked me what are the things I wanted to work on. It was like, like my stress and my headaches. And they gave me all the stuff that I needed to make sure that I was going to be able to work on those. So, if you want to make sure you can do that too, go to takecareof.com and enter the code OUTLANDERCAST50 to get 50% off of your first month of Care Of Vitamins sent to your house. Trust me, it's the best thing you'll ever do. The best. It makes, makes, you feel, it makes you feel healthy. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to need to feel healthy because I'm starting to get some heart palpitations. Okay. What's going to happen to Outlander after season six? And let's kind of like all right, so we, fasten this up. He, I'm starting to get bored. All right, so we all know that Outlander <laughs> has, been renew, has been renewed for yes, seasons five, five and, six. and six. It's going to happen. We're here. And when, when I'm tra- what I'm trying to tell you before all of this is I think Outlander is going to happen in seasons five and six. Yes. Uh, obviously, it's going to happen page. in season five. And I think more than likely it will happen in yes. season six. Agreed. After season six, it's <sighs> the grand unknown. Okay, it's it's a problem because these guys, Lionsgate, are in the business of cutting the fat, cutting the fat, make their own money, save their own network, and do that by creating their own shows. Yes, and they're going to start cutting fat. And you've already said it. You've already started to see it. As a matter of fact, you've seen it in the show Counterpart. Okay. Counterpart is another show that was just recently on Stars. It was a great show. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. J.K. Simmons is phenomenal. I haven't watched it. I know you haven't. We're gonna we're gonna have to amend that very quickly. It's a phenomenal show. But it was canceled. But it was canceled because Stars doesn't own it, and it didn't have the same kind of viewership that Outlander does. But it's just as expensive as Outlander because it was shot in Germany. It was shot in Berlin, and it had all these stars in it. It was an expensive show to create. 
So Feldheimer said, I don't think so. This show is out because I'm spending way too much money on the production itself. I'm spending way too much money on, on, sen- on sending fees over to, th- to the company that actually owns it. It's out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, all letter fans shouldn't necessarily worry about it because they have their own. They have their own, you know, huge fandom. It is what it is. But the problem with after season six, Stars is technically not, you know, contracted to keep it going. And since we all know that Lionsgate is wanting to create its own IP and maximize its profits. I don't think that it's going to get renewed after season six. Oh my gosh. Now, you could make a case that after season five, it could it could get canceled. It could. But I don't think that it will. And I don't think that it will because Lionsgate needs to make sure it does retain their subscribers, you know, in a, in a big way, in a big macro way, including Outlander, because they need to make sure that they look good. They need to make sure that they have all of these assets Wait, and that so they're making a ton of money. You said they're going to cancel Outlander after season after six. After season six. And th- there's an argument to be made that they could cancel it before season six, but I don't think that they will. And I don't think that they will because they're, they're I think they're making an effort to make themselves look really good and valuable. Like they have a lot of subscribers. They have a lot of people watching it and they're going to be making a ton of money. Now, why would they want to do this? Now, my my love, when I wrote this article, you gave me the best idea. You're welcome. The best idea was to, again, make it consumable for everybody else. Why does Lionsgate want to make themselves look really pretty? Why do they want them to make themselves look really valuable? And you said what, my darling? It's like Rose. Rose. From Titanic. Right. Now, I want I want you to explain this. Okay. So, do you remember Titanic? Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio. But we have Rose, who is on the boat with her mom, and her mom's like, listen, we don't have any more money. Perk up your bubbies and just <laughs> get on out there, and you need to be the most beautiful woman because we want that dark-haired guy who's a jerk. Cal. Cal. Cal Hockley. We want Cal, you know, he's going to propose to you and he needs to save us because we don't have any money. So we need to fake it, girlfriend. Perk up the bubbies. Fake put it till you nice, make it. Fake it till you make it. Get on out there. Put on the perfume and do what you got to do because we need to marry Cal because we are running out of money. And Cal, we don't want him to know that we're poor. <laughs> Get on out there. Do your thing. Right. So Lionsgate is essentially Rose. Okay, she's perking up her bubbies. And she's trying to pretend she's got a lot of money, but we all know she's a man child. And Outlander is our collective Jack Dawson. Okay? He he's he's our Leo. Oh my god, never let go. Never let go. The problem is we got Cal to worry about. He's totally like the Leo down under the decks dancing and we're spinning mm-hmm. and smiling saying, oh, "This is the best ever." Mhm. And the problem is Outlander after season six will is going to fall to the deep icy depths of the Atlantic. So Blake thinks. <laughs> so I think. Because Lionsgate isn't making money that much money off of Outlander. Right. And it needs to make money by getting its own original content. I don't understand why we need it to be looking like it needs money though. Why does it need to perk up its bobbies? Who is it trying to, you know, look Desirable. Who's too. who's the Cal in all of yes. this? Okay. Yes, yes. The Cal in all of this. Now I've chosen this particular Cal. It could be any amount of Cal's, but the one that makes real sense. The suitor. The suitor. The rich suitor. The rich suitor that we all should be looking towards. Yep. Is Apple. But I see. I like Apple. So Apple's not the villain. Apple's not the villain. They're the ones that Lionsgate's perking up the bubbies for. So Lionsgate's saying, "Hey, Apple." You got lots of money. Right. And they're doing that because Lionsgate isn't making enough money itself to, to stand by its own. And they need someone to come in and take care of it. They need someone to make the money. And they need someone to take care of them. Apple's going to say it's what happens when you make Twilight movies. <laughs> now, why is Apple in... Any of these conversations. I mean, we're talking Apple. The people that you're probably listening to on your phone right now, you are probably on the Apple Podcasts app right now. 
listening to this. Why are they even involved? Because Steve Jobs died. <laughs> That's what it really comes down R.I.P. to. Steve Jobs, as we all know, was the guy who founded Apple back uh, in the late 70s and made it become what it is today. And now, uh, we could talk about Apple for hours and we can go on I and on. It. We're not here for that. Nope. But Steve Jobs in 2011 or 2012 died. And he left the company in charge of this guy named Tim Cook, who is now the new CEO of Apple. And he's been doing a relatively good job under I mean, his under his tenure. He's no Steve Jobs, but... Okay. He is no Steve Jobs. But under his tenure, Apple has become the most wealthy company in American history. Like, ever. It is the most wealthy company in American history. So, I get it, right? The problem with... T- uh, with uh, um, Tim Cook is that he's not Steve Jobs. He's not innovating. He's not creating the iPhone. He's not creating the iPad. He's just kind of giving you variations of all the stuff that Steve Jobs created. He's like, I have an idea, the iPhone 10. Right. <laughs> and Apple has so much money. They have 200, reportedly, $285 billion in cash. $285 billion in cash. Never mind their assets. Never mind all that. Just cash. Why don't they just fill in our our debt? They could. Yeah. They could, but why should they? <laughs> they should that'd be a really nice thing to do. Yes, I know. But the, Tim Cook is being charged with uh, not blazing new pathways of innovation like Steve Jobs did, and he has all of this money, and he's not innovating. So it's boring. Tim Cook has decided, we're going to take Apple in a different direction. Okay. We're going to start making it Apple more about software okay. and services than hardware, like your computer or your iPhone or your Apple Watch, right? Tim Cook made the Apple Watch, but it didn't redefine technology as we know it. No. It, it's, just, it's a nice accessory. Yes. But it's not the main thing. And part of what he is doing is he has commissioned a whole new wing of Apple to start making their own scripted content oh so he's like apple you know be wicked cool if we became like netflix exactly exactly that is not innovative tim cook no everybody's doing that. no it's not but there's tons of money to be made in it well and they have lots of money and they have put paid up to one billion dollars on their uh talent including a showrunner you know very well ron moore I love him. Ron Moore is is starting to develop a television show for Apple. It's incredible. And you would think that Apple with its like seemingly endless resources, the iPhone and everything, wouldn't need a thing like Lionsgate, which in, inherently means stars. The problem is is that they don't have their own on-demand app, oddly enough. And they don't have a TV channel to put all their stuff on. They have they have like iTunes. They have that kind of stuff, but they can't get into people's TVs. They have the Apple TV, but that's only they like can make it though. They're Apple people, right? But why make it when you can acquire it? Oh my God! So Lionsgate has a really nice dowry. Exactly. Okay. And Lionsgate's the- dowry is the app that we watch. Outlander on at midnight. And Lionsgate is already a big player in Hollywood. It has all these partnerships. It has all the Twilights. And Apple Apple wants to take advantage of that. It okay. already has the inroads. Okay. So why not buy it, right? So Apple's saying, you know, rather than have to waste some brain power, I'll just take what you got. I'll buy it. And it's not this isn't just for Lionsgate. They've done this their entire corporate history. The latest one was Beats. You know those AirPods that you listen to? Yeah. That you listen on? That was proprietary information created by Beats. B- B- the Beats, the headphones. Yeah, the they, big ones. They bought it. They bought Beats from Dr. Dre. Apple bought Beats. Right. And they've done this their entire corporate history, and they make these small things. Like Some people would say, why doesn't Apple just go buy Netflix? Well, because Netflix is worth $40 billion. Whereas Lionsgate, as we all know, at the very least, is probably worth between five and ten billion dollars. Okay. 
So they're going to buy Lionsgate with those inroads. So here's a question. Yes. If Outlander has tons, I mean, if Apple has lots of money and they're hooking up with Ron Moore, why doesn't Ron Moore go and say, hey, why don't you guys have Outlander season seven? That's because they would have to buy it from Sony. Oh. Well, they have enough money. They, they do have enough money. And is it possible that Apple or Lionsgate acquires Outlander from Sony? Absolutely. Why not? But they don't want to invest that kind of money in Outlander because it's already been around for four seasons. The story as they know it is coming to a close as they know it. And the viewership is only between 1.2 and 1.5 million. Now, if this was Game of Thrones or if this was... The Walking Dead in its prime, you're talking 17, 18, 20 million people are watching this show at a time, then yes, yeah, it's worth buying. But it wouldn't be for sale because they would have that many viewers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay, so they're in this problem of like, what do we do? What like why would why would anybody buy Outlander if it only has a short viewership? They have to pay a ton of money to Sony. And they have this problem of it being on Stars or Apple. It just doesn't make sense. They're going to invest in their own content. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Apple potentially will buy Lionsgate. So what, is this, what does this all mean from here? What I, what, the problem is this. Whether or not Apple buys Lionsgate or not, the future does not look bright for Outlander beyond season six, or really any show that is not owned by Lionsgate, for that matter. I mean, the, the company is still beholden to the almighty dollar, and it just doesn't have enough of their own dollars, right, um, to keep a show like Outlander going beyond its pre-established term. I mean, the irony of a company like Apple buying Lionsgate yeah. is that we could actually end up getting more content from Ron Moore. Right, because yeah. my I predict if Apple buys Lionsgate, I predict that Ron Moore will be bought out of his contract from Sony, so that he can make more content specifically for Apple. Yeah, I would believe that. And we could end up getting more Ron Moore content, just not Ron Moore Outlander content, right? Mm-hmm. So, I I know it doesn't sound good. I know it's not fun to to talk about, but I just think that after season six, this show is is probably not going to be renewed. And here's here's another thing too. What this isn't me just throwing all this stuff around, you know, for the fun of it. Because John Feltheimer, the guy that's the head of Lionsgate, yep, he put this he put his boy, his COO of Lionsgate, in charge of Stars, and his name is Jeff Hirsch. Okay. Do you know what Herf, Hirsch just said today? Today, as we record this, March 4th. He said that starting this summer, we're going to start prioritizing more Lionsgate content to be on Stars. Yes. And we're going to look at this as a partnership. And all of the Lionsgate content shows like Stephanie Meyer's The Rook and The Continental, which is like a, a, a spinoff of the John Wick franchise. And... He has at least eight to nine more shows that are owned by Lionsgate coming to stars. Yeah, it makes sense. In the summer. It does make sense. You want to know what the problem is? What? All of those shows, they have to have slots. They have to have a place to live. And they have to show them. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that's already on stars right now is going to go in favor of of all the Lionsgate content. Now, this isn't me making this up. This is fact, not opinion. This is happening right now. And he announced it. Look it up on The Hollywood Reporter. He announced it today that starting in the summer, between eight and nine shows are going to be coming on stars that are owned specifically by Lionsgate. So, it's food for thought. It is what it is. And that's what I'm thinking. Okay. So, does that help clear up the relationships between all of these people and what's happening at Lionsgate, my darling? It does. I think so, too. Are you ready to close this bad boy out? Yes. All right, let's do it. Well, thank 
you so much for taking a listen to this week's episode, not this week, but this current episode. We want to thank all of the OutlanderCast staff keeping you busy and keeping content full on OutlanderCast.com. Yes, go to OutlanderCast.com, check it out. Now listen, I'm not trying to be, you know, a naysayer, a doomsday uh, sayer here. I'm really not. We're going to have at least two more seasons of Outlander. About which I am very happy, by the way. I am very happy that we're going to have two more seasons of Outlander. It's going to be Jamie and Claire for at least two to three more years in my life. And I'm very, very happy about that. And for the next two to three years, you can get good content at OutlanderCast.com and check out all of the amazing things that we have there, including some fantastic posts um, uh, not only about Chris Albrecht, but uh, but about uh, scotch and whiskey and baking and the behind-the-scenes stuff of Outlander and, and all the commentary and all the episode recaps, everything, and all of our previous interviews, as well as episodes of OutlanderCast, the podcast. But one of the things that I really want you to do, I mean, aside from going to OutlanderCast.com, is actually tell a friend that this podcast exists. If you find that this episode in particular, as a matter of fact, gave you some value and gave you insight into the business of television and all of the goings on between Stars and Sony and Lionsgate and potentially Apple and you may, you may have heard this stuff, but it's not really clear and your friend's talking about it, tell a friend about this episode. Be like, hey man, listen to this. This These two people in, the, in, the, in their basement cleared it up. Yeah, yeah. Well- they, they told me all about it. It makes sense. Tell a friend that hopefully. we exist. Oh yeah, hopefully. <laughs> if, if, if this episode sucked, I'm sorry. Um, but tell a friend that this ep- that this show exists because podcasts are always best spread by word of mouth. That's right. Well, we want to thank Corgi Girl 2010 on iTunes who said this is not a normal podcast. This is a group of friends sitting down and discussing their favorite oh. show. Mary and Blake are so friendly and accommodating. They make everyone feel special. They are funny and entertaining. Come for the show insights. Stay for the moments when Mary makes Blake laugh so hard that he can't breathe. That's true. Those are my favorite moments, and I can't help but laugh along. Want to hang out? Click follow. Welcome, friend. Well, thank you, Amanda, and thank you to everybody else who has taken the time to leave us a review in iTunes. We want to especially thank all of our patrons at OutlanderCastClan.com. Especially our most generous patrons, our associate producers, Angie, Carolyn, Celine, Cheryl, Don, Diane, Heather, Jeffrey, Jennifer, Larissa, Lauren, Linda, Marilyn, Mary, Michelle, Matricia, Siobhan, Summer, and Valerie, as well as our co-producers, Barbara, Carolyn, Christina, Data, Dieta, Janet, Jenny, Kathy, Keelan, Lisa, Liz, Marianne, Meredith, Raynal, Rita, Sharon, Sue, Tara, and Tina, and last but not least, our executive producers, Ann, Bobby, Jen, Katie, Kirsty, Martha, Nadra, Peg, and Sarah. Thank, Thank you, guys, you guys so, so much. much. Make sure you go to OutlanderCastClan.com where you can get all of our latest stuff, all of our latest um, insider stuff that is specifically for that group over there like our after dark podcasts and everything even including blake's book club and our newly announced hamilton podcast (laughs) it'll only be for those patrons over at outlandercastclan.com which will be coming out hopefully relatively soon that's where we're at least hoping and in the meantime, you can also go to maryandblake.com, check out all of our podcasts that we have there, including This Is Us Too. It's a show about This Is Us on NBC and a newly announced podcast called for Game of Thrones called The North Remembers, which we're very excited about. Very, we're taking very a vacation excited. to Westeros for six for six days. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I'm like, I'm sweating thinking about it. Oh, well, until next time, folks, my name's Mary Larson. My name's Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast. <laughs>